Today's the leading edge is the infrared astronomical satellite, Akari. Akari's observations have been giving astronomers new and surprising views of the universe. Akari launched in 2006. It has a telescope with a 70 centimeter aperture. As it orbits the Earth, Akari detects infrared radiation coming from stars and galaxies. Akari's mission ended in November 2011, but the huge amount of data it collected is still being analyzed. Many new facts are coming to light. What does our universe look like through Akari's infrared eyes? Let's take a look. Excuse me. Hello. Hello. I'm Megumi Yasu. You must be Dr. Yamamura. Yes, I am. Nice to meet you. Issei Yamamura is an expert in infrared astronomy and a key member of the Akari project team. So, what is an infrared astronomical satellite? An infrared astronomical satellite is a satellite designed to observe the universe at infrared wavelengths of light that are invisible to the human eye. And what does space look like through its eyes? Well, before we look at space, let's see what you look like in infrared. Me? Yes. Yamamura has a special camera at the ready. Like Akari, it captures infrared rays. People look very different through an infrared camera than they do normally. Okay. Wow, look at that. My face is glowing. I look like I'm glowing white on the screen. Yes, just like our bodies, heavenly bodies such as planet Earth, emit a lot of infrared radiation. We capture those rays and see something like this. Wow! Look at Yasu's face closely. Her cheeks and ears look slightly darker, which means they are cooler than other areas. The amount and wavelength of infrared radiation an object gives off varies with its temperature. This camera captures those differences very well. Now an experiment to clearly show the difference in temperature. I'll pour in some tea. Please hold this mug. Oh, wow! It's turning white. The hot water makes it glow. Although the contents of the mug are not visible to the eye, in infrared light they can be clearly detected. Tiny differences in temperature can be distinguished, you said. But I think of space as being extremely cold. Yes, it is cold. But in places where stars are born, for example, stars heat their surroundings. This produces temperature differences and large amounts of infrared radiation. We can investigate those regions in detail using infrared imaging. That's what you can see? So what does space look like in infrared? Well, let me show you an image that was taken by the Akari satellite. Ta-da! A regular photograph of space. Anything familiar? Aren't those three stars Orion's belt? Yes, they are. Yamamura first shows Yasu a visible light image of the constellation Orion. The three stars in the middle are distinctive. Next, Akari's image of the same area. Here it is. Ooh, totally different. This image of Orion was taken by Akari. The famous three stars don't seem to be there. Instead, there are three unfamiliar glowing bodies. There are three glowing parts. Is this the same as this? Yes. This is the Orion Nebula. And here, where it looks a little hazy... The hazy red part? Yes. That's the Horsehead Nebula. And it's very bright on the infrared image. Wow! But over here, you hardly notice anything. Here is the brightly glowing part of the Akari image. 
Surprisingly, no bright object can be seen in the same part of the visible light image. Using infrared, this region of space looks completely different from what the naked eye sees. In these brightly glowing areas, huge numbers of new stars are currently being born. In order for stars to form, you need an accumulation of dust and gas. Where gas is dense, stars are born. When stars are born, their light heats surrounding dust. Places with high temperatures emit powerful infrared radiation, like the experiment with the hot water. I see. The hazy, cloud-like portion of the image is dust and gas heated by starlight. This is interesting. When we look at space in infrared, we see the activity of stars and things happening in the universe that we can't see with visible light. Amazing stuff! The constellation Orion is so familiar in the night sky, but seen in infrared, it looks completely different. Dr. Sakai, what are the benefits of observing the cosmos at infrared wavelengths? Well, as we saw in the video, infrared observations are like looking at the temperature of the universe. For example, the temperature is much higher in areas where stars are born. Infrared radiation is emitted more strongly in those areas. Infrared rays are not blocked by gas or dust, so they make it possible to observe astronomical objects whose visible light emissions fail to reach the Earth. In other words, infrared astronomy lets us see features of stars that we can't see with visible light telescopes. That's right. Akari's observations have revealed a universe more dynamic than astronomers had ever seen before. The National Astronomical Observatory of Japan's Okayama Astrophysical Observatory. Here, Hideyuki Izumiura conducts research on stellar winds, outflows of gas from stars. Older stars called red giants emit huge quantities of gas and dust. This outflow from stars is called a stellar wind. Stellar winds spread out into space, dispersing raw material from which new stars may form. Izumiura has used Akari to make observations of the stellar winds from more than 140 stars. This is the star Mu Hydri in the constellation Hydra. A hazy disk extends around the star. This is dust from its stellar wind that has been heated by the light of the star. Most stars have a disk like this around them, formed by their stellar winds. Within Akari's observation data, Izumiura and his research team discovered a very different phenomenon. This is the star Betelgeuse in the constellation Orion. There are glowing arcs of dust above and below the star. I thought, wow, it was the first time I'd seen arcs like these so distinctly. And it was the Akari satellite that let us see them in such detail. Izumiura analyzed Betelgeuse in more detail at four wavelengths of infrared light. Combining these data, he generated a sharper image of the arcs. As it emits its stellar wind, Betelgeuse is traveling at 32 kilometers per second. It is also surrounded by interstellar gas and dust. The stellar wind forcefully collides with this interstellar material, creating a shock wave. It is the shock wave that creates the glowing arcs. Akari gave a clear view of Betelgeuse's shock wave for the first time. Toshia Ueta of the University of Denver conducted an even more in-depth analysis of the shock wave. 
When Ueta estimated the shape of the entire shock wave, including portions not shown in the image, he realized something remarkable. A shock wave normally forms in the star's direction of movement. But analysis of imagery from Akari revealed that the shock wave's orientation was at an angle to Betelgeuse's trajectory. This divergence suggests that the interstellar matter around Betelgeuse may not be stationary, but flowing like a river. A clear view of the shock wave has given astronomers a new dynamic picture of the star Betelgeuse plunging through a current of gas and dust in deep space. The wind may be coming from a star formation region near Betelgeuse. Some distance away, there are many bright young stars. As many stars form there, those stars may be emitting a stellar wind or a flow of interstellar material. There is a possibility that these flows may be converging in the vicinity of Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse in the constellation Orion and the Great Orion Nebula, a region of active star formation. The nebula may very well be producing an interstellar wind that blows all the way to Betelgeuse. So this current of interstellar matter has been discovered thanks to infrared observations of a star's shock wave. Another amazing discovery for infrared astronomy. It certainly is. The distance between the Great Orion Nebula and Betelgeuse is about 1,000 light years. This flow of interstellar matter coming from 1,000 light years away collides violently with the stellar wind. Akari spots the shock wave created by that event. Akari's observations revealed this cosmic drama. And we have this dynamic picture of the universe that we could not see before. That's pretty exciting too. In fact, Akari can see not only the activity of stars, but also the activity of whole galaxies. Galaxies are composed of tens of billions of stars. Akari's observations have shed light on how galaxies form. The Nagoya University Space Astronomy Laboratory. Hidehiro Kaneda's research group is investigating the formation of galaxies. Using data from Akari, they are analyzing the distribution of dust and gas, the ingredients of new stars within galaxies. In the process, they came across an unusual galaxy called M101. They produced an image of the distribution of dust and gas in the galaxy. The blue areas indicate the location of dust and gas. Whiter colors show greater concentrations. This image was captured at slightly shorter wavelengths. Shorter wavelength observations reveal higher temperature features. Here, the whiter the color, the higher the temperature, indicating active star formation. Let's overlay the two images with the distribution of stars in the galaxy. It turns out that M101 is actively producing stars even at its edges, where gas and dust are scarce. On the left is a galaxy called M81. In this galaxy, stars form where dust and gas are concentrated. Based on a comparison with other galaxies, the researchers found that only M101 actively produces stars in areas where gas and dust are scarce. Why is this happening? The most probable reason is that at some time in the past, a dense clump of gas that didn't manage to become a galaxy passed by M101. 
eons in the past. A dense clump of gas passes by the M101 galaxy. At that time, there were violent collisions of matter at the edges of the galaxy. Researchers believe the energy of these collisions fueled active star formation. Thanks to Akari, astronomers can trace such dynamic events of galactic evolution in past ages. By capturing that galaxy's infrared emissions, astronomers have been able to study its history. Akari did so much great work before it went out of service in 2011. Right now, an infrared astronomy satellite with a three-meter telescope it's being developed by an international partnership, including JAXA and the European Space Agency. Researchers are targeting a 2022 launch date. Once this satellite enters its service, it will be able to collect observational data with even higher resolution. An even higher resolution satellite should reveal even more about the formation of galaxies and the early universe. Right now, the portion of the universe that we can see is a small fraction of the whole universe we know is out there. We are acquiring tools to see the light of stars and galaxies, measure their temperature, observe flows and shock waves in the interstellar matter, and more. All of this is revealing what a dynamic and awe-inspiring place our universe is.